yeah, as an entrepreneur, you learn your mis- you learn from your mistakes over the years. Um, and I've always bootstrapped every business that I've started. And uh, in hindsight, you know, I wish I had you know more uh, intelligent people that I could bounce ideas around that you know can do just what they're good at. Welcome to Grow Think Tank. This is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammett. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? Do you think about building out your executive team? creating a team of people that really are aligned with the mission of the business. They're really helping you and supporting you grow the business. And you really want them to accelerate beyond what you can do by yourself. Well, I talk to a lot of founders that are growing fast growth companies and they haven't taken the time to truly create an executive team that serves them in a way that makes the company grow even faster than it is today. But it is possible. We have Jason Hennessy with Hennessy Digital. He is the founder of this company. They've grown at an astronomical pace. Uh, They were 290 on the Inc. list. They grew at over 1,500% in uh, the last three years. They've continued that growth because they created an executive leadership team. He's fairly early in this journey, so I think it's a perfect person to uh, learn from. One of the things I love about this is he walked through the process of which he actually did. And it's very similar to what I would coach my clients through. So you get to learn from Jason, but you also get to know that that is a a very solid process because I've helped companies do this myself. Well, now here is the interview with Jason Hennessy. Hi, Jason. How are you? Gene, thank you for having me on the show. Well, excited to have you here at Growth Think Tank. I've already let our audience know a little bit about you, Jason, but tell us about uh, your company, Hennessy Digital. Sure. So Hennessy uh, Digital has been around for about four years now. Um, how we got introduced was we recently made the Inc. 500. Uh, we applied for the Inc. 5000 with fingers crossed that we would make that. And we were pleasantly surprised from the award that we, uh, that we got um, that we actually made the Inc. 500. And we came in number 290 on the list. And we brought our executive team, which we're going to be talking about the, on this show, um, to the gala in, uh, in Phoenix. And it was, a, it was an amazing experience. So we've been seeing really explosive growth. Our, our core competency is organic search engine optimization. We're a full-service digital marketing agency. Awesome. Well, you, you talked about the executive team. Tell us who's on the team. Sure. So, uh, so we have, uh, we've got about 10 people uh, that are on our executive team. And um, we've been growing pretty rapidly. And I'd say probably five of them uh, were just added uh, over the past year. Um, We went from having roughly about three people when we first started. Now we're approaching maybe 60 full-time people. Uh, We're 100% virtual company right now. However, we're building a, a studio in Hollywood, California. Um, But my executive team, to answer your question, uh, consists of, we've got a a president, COO, we have a chief strategy officer, we have a CFO, um, we have a uh, a director of account services, director of analytics, marketing director, business development director, um, and a creative director. And I might be missing some people, but yeah. (laughs) That's, that's kind I of know some companies team. that are, you know, three times your size from a revenue standpoint, and they still haven't got a complete team like you do. Uh, mm-hmm. Why was that so important for you in, in the business? You know, I guess uh, as you, uh, yeah, as an entrepreneur, you learn your, mis- you learn from your mistakes over the years. Um, and I've always bootstrapped every business that I've started. And uh, in hindsight, you know, I wish I had, you know, more, uh, intelligent people that I could bounce ideas around that, you know, can do just what they're good at um, instead of me trying to be a, you know, a a jack of all trades. And so, you know, the, the biggest thing that I learned was um, because we've been seeing so much explosive growth, you know, over the first two and a half years, I was everything, right? I was managing accounting. I was, managing payroll. I was an account manager. I was sales. I was business development. Right. And, um, and, you know, working 20 hours a year, you know, 20 hours a, you know, a day, in some cases, 
uh, you know, sacrificing good quality family life. Um, and so at that point, at the end of the year, I, you know, because you made a, you know, revenue and profit, I still had to write, cut a big check to the government. I'm like, man, I worked so hard and I got to give you all this. And so, it, you know, it just made sense. That was an eye opener to me. And I'm like, I'd rather just have smart people doing smart things and we can grow even faster. And so that was kind of the big uh, aha moment, I guess, if you will. And has it worked out that way? I mean, I know you're growing fast, but is it, has it sped up what you were doing before? It has, because what happens is it freed up my time, right, to, to do what I'm best at, which is more of kind of being the face of the company and doing more of the business development and the relationship building and the sales and the speaking, right? And so, you know, I don't have to worry that people are going to get paid when they're supposed to get paid anymore. That's just done, right? I don't have to worry about managing the operations. I don't have to come up with the strategy. I don't have to be on the calls with the clients. So it allowed me to really focus my time on just basically bringing in new business. And so that even this year, we're probably up 60, 70% already um, with the executive team now. Um, and so um, it's just, it's, it's amazing. So it's really, you know, it's, it's where I'm, where should I be spending most of my time? And, and I seem to have found that. Are you able to spend most of your time in areas of strengths that, that like kind of give you energy um, or just the, you're able to focus on the areas that needed attention that you couldn't get to before? Uh, so definitely the strengths. Um, you know, I love it. I'm passionate about what, what we do. You know, I've been a student of, of search marketing for most of my adult life. I got started in 2001. And when I get on calls with prospects, you know, I just basically am able to share most of our case studies, our successful case studies. Um, and, and that basically sells us, really. And it's just the way that I deliver it and package it up. Um, and so now we're at the point, it's funny because... You know, for the past four years, we've had like a one page website, like, you know, the cobbler's kids without any shoes, right? Classic example of that. And I was always scared of, of, of growing, you know, too fast because, you know, we have a pretty good reputation in the marketplace and you don't want to bring on so much business that you can't fulfill it. And so there's kind of like a delicate balance there. But now that we have a full service team, like I'm comfortable, I could bring in new business and, uh, and know that we've, you know, that we can fulfill it and keep our, maintain our reputation. What steps did you take to, you know, begin to think about the team and, 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 you know, as you went through the process of selecting people like, you know, from internal versus external, walk us through some of the, the big decisions you made in this journey. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so for the most part, I was just trying to where I was just discovering myself and seeing where am I spending most of my time. Um, and initially, it was really kind of both sales, like business development and sales, but then also leading the strategy and um, and be acting as the account manager, right, with with each of the things that I sold, the accounts that I sold. And so from there, I just started to see, like take a balance, a check and balance of where am I spending my time? And, and, and from there, I, I basically started to recruit, you know, team members. So first thing I did was hired a direct, a chief strategy officer. Um, and the chief strategy officer just took over the strategy. So I didn't have to dictate the strategy to the team anymore. There was somebody that was fully responsible for that. Um, and that's, that's the core of what we do is delivering the results to the clients. Um, then I was spending a lot of time managing, like I said, the uh, accounts and hopping on calls. And my, most of my day were calls like this on Zoom, where I'm just kind of going over like the results and the performance of the campaigns, you know. And so that time took me away from not being able to do more prospecting and stuff and speaking at conferences and all the other stuff that I think I'm, I'm good at. And so, you know, we hired a director of account services and then that took that time off. And so... And then we recently brought on, uh, not recently, but I'd say within the past six months, we brought on a president um, and he was a hired gun. He recently uh, was working at another company for about 10 years, um, started out as the chief marketing officer there. Then he grew uh, to be um, the president, um, has a very stellar background and reputation, um, got his uh, undergraduate at, at, at um, MIT. Then he went on to get uh, an MBA at Kellogg. Right. Um, so really grooming like some really um, like seasoned vets now to kind of fully take over the operations of the uh, of the company. And so he was brought on. And then from there, he had an introduction to the old CFO 
from the company that got acquired where they both left. Um, and so we brought her on. Um, and so she took over all the finances and it's just been kind of like a, uh, a domino effect. Right. Um, and so now we're in the process of looking for an HR director of HR. Well, I appreciate you walking through that. You know, probably one of the big ones was hiring a president that you were probably acting and, and doing all of that work before you hired that, that person. Is that fair? Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> not, uh, not very well. I'm not good at the whole operations and, you know, um, but yeah, um, I was doing it and probably not well. And so stress levels now much less, much less. Yeah. So I, it's, it's the most beautiful thing when, you know, I could take a vacation for seven days and go on a cruise with my family and not have to stress that, you know, we're going to lose six clients because something's going to get missed. Do you feel like that if you left right now and went on that vacation, that the business would be just better off even than you being here? Better off. Yeah. The only thing that might not uh, happen is, um, is sales. Like right now, I'm still like, I bring in every single dollar of business. We, we brought on a director of business development and he's going out and doing, you know, the setup of the different um, sales calls and stuff. But I come in and I'm, I'm typically the closer, I guess, if, if you will. So during that period of seven days, like, like we might not have new sales yet. You know, that might be a whole nother situation. If you talk to me in another year from now and things will just kind of sales will be growing too. Um, but yeah, absolutely. It's way better off that, you know, even some in cases without me there. <laughs> yep. Well, Jason, I, I want to kind of switch gears a little bit here. You know, once you have your team in place, what kind of rituals do you go through to, sh to ensure that you're, you keep alignment around, along everyone there? Mm -hmm. So, you know, as I mentioned, you know, we, we are a virtual company right now. Um, you know, and I, I did that strategically. I've learned lessons. I know that you're in Atlanta, you know, I, I was in Atlanta for about eight years. I had another agency there that I sold and our office was in the King and Queen building right there in Sandy Springs. Um, but the challenge of that is that we had to recruit from a five mile radius of the King and Queen building, right? Um, and so I always said, if I'm gonna do this again, I'm gonna make it kind of more virtual because of the business that we do. And so now it doesn't hurt me if my chief strategy officer is in Dallas and our, our chief, um, you know, our CFO is in St. Louis, right? Um, it's just hiring the best people that we can find uh, to do the work. And so, you know, but unlike other traditional companies that, you know, have an office and have a, a conference room, you know, we basically use meetings like this, Zoom. We have a, a quick huddle every morning. It's usually about 20 minutes where we, you know, talk about, uh, you know, uh, just challenges, blockers. Uh, it's, it's an executive uh, team. Um, and, uh, and then from there, we just go on our day. Uh, and so, uh, you know, that's just kind of the, the standard thing. It's just like having like a stand up huddle. Now, hold on for a second. Jason just talked about having a virtual company. You probably have a virtual company or maybe you're afraid of it. But one thing I know from working with a lot of fast growth companies that it is possible to create growth with virtual employees so that you can hire the best. But it's also something that you must be very intentional about. You must be, create a culture and be intentional about your leadership. You can't just expect that things will naturally form together. You've got to be very uh, uh, intentional about the, the procedures and the rituals you have, recognition. There's a lot of details behind this. I've done other interviews about it, so I just wanted to point that out for you. Now back to Jason. Um, do you have like... Uh, quarterly retreats or yearly retreats where you're all getting together face to face or we do in fact uh, we just got back from Carmel uh, Monterey California we were there about two weeks ago we brought the whole executive team out there flew them out and uh, and it was amazing we spent three days together uh, in some cases that meeting was the first time that a lot of us have ever met in person and, you know, we had a lot of bonding time. We did it at a place called the Quail Lodge, which is like a beautiful private kind of a, a resort. And so we rented out a, a room and we had a videographer come in and we videotaped, you know, interviews that we're going to be using for our website. But most importantly is we looked at, you know, the goals of 2020 and, you know, how we're going to be able to kind of meet those goals. And so uh, it was a, a definitely a good retreat. Fantastic. 
I'd love for you to look back at some of the mistakes you made in this journey. And again, I don't want you to share the things that are, you know, still in progress, but things that maybe you learned from that, that we all could learn from. Is there a mistake or two that comes to mind? Um, yeah. So, so for, for me, well, first of all, the biggest was mistake was thinking that you can kind of do everything yourself. Right. Um, because yeah, you can, can, you can grow, um, and you can have full control. Um, but sometimes, you know, the downside of having full control is you're really hindering your growth, uh, by thinking you can kind of do everything yourself. Um, and I know, you know, people are a little bit fearful of, of making investment into, you know, executive team members, because in most cases, they're not very cheap. Um, but, you know, if you bring on the right team to do the right things, you know, in most cases, they can probably do their task and job at 100% when you're only doing each of those at like 20 or 30%. Now, hold on for a second. I know that as a leader, you, you know that you can't do everything yourself, but yet you probably talk about it all the time about how stressed you are and you, you wear that on your sleeve about how busy you are. But I want to tell you that you can step beyond that. You can create leadership inside your company that, cre that is allowed to grow beyond you. And in fact, if you want to continue this level of growth, you're going to have to create people who are growing beyond you. It takes a special brand of leadership and culture to do that. This is what I excel at with my work as an executive coach to fast growth companies, just like you. If you have any questions, make sure you reach out to me. Now back to Jason. That's a good way to put it. Um, when you think about, you know, your job now, you're focused on basically bringing in the money. Um, mm -hmm. Do you also get involved with, with culture and do you have an intentional kind of approach to culture inside the company? Yeah. Um, so we have a, uh, that was actually one of the things because we are going so fast that having a, a virtual company does have limitations with culture, right? There's not that water cooler conversation that takes place of, you know, what did you do last weekend? Right. Um, so we actually are forming a culture committee um, that is going to be run um, by some of our subordinates. Right. Um, and so you know, there'll be uh, one person that's on our executive team. She's our chief marketing officer. Um, she'll be kind of overseeing that, but it's really going to come from the bottom down, from the bottom up um, on what our culture should look like and what we should be doing. And, you know, we just did a, a, a Halloween costume event where everybody got dressed up on Halloween morning and we gave away uh, some, uh, some gifts to the, to the best and most creative costumes. And, you know, and it was fun. Um, but again, having a virtual company does have some uh, limitations there with, with the culture, um, but we're looking to improve that. What's next with the executive team to make sure that you guys stay in alignment? So, um, you know, I think uh, communication is probably, uh, I'd say, key here. Um, because, you know, we're not interacting face-to-face you know, we, we, it's so important that we stay, um, you know, in, in contact with each other. And so that's, that's one of the, the reasons why we have our huddle every morning and there's follow-up and there's action items and, you know, we've got accountability partners. And, um, and so uh, as long as we are able to keep up the communication, I think that's going to solve a lot of, uh, a lot of our problems. Well, Jason, I really appreciate you being here on Growth Think Tank and, and sharing some of the wisdom of creating an executive team and, and you know, taking us back to the time when you were doing it all yourself or trying and uh, stressing out and, and now having a solid team in place is, ex, you know, accelerating your growth. That's what we want to hear. So that's the reason we had you on the show to share, share this wisdom. Well, thank you so much, Gene. I really appreciate it. And, uh, uh, and uh, again, thank you so much for having me today. Fantastic interview. Love the fact that we went to, to the depth of you know, how he actually did it. You know, hopefully you took notes there that you, know, you don't have to do it all yourself. You can find someone that's better than you at so many areas in your business so that leaves you time to focus on your strengths. If you want to continue the acceleration of your company, you've got to continue to focus on your strengths. Let other people do their work. And you have to build a team that is aligned together. 
Today's episode was all about that. Hopefully you're enjoying these interviews. I appreciate you being here. Hopefully you're sharing it with someone and make sure you uh, give us a rating review on iTunes or wherever you listen to this if you really have been getting something out of these interviews. I appreciate you being here at Growth Think Tank. As always, lead with courage. We'll see you next time.